Okay, are we rolling? We're rolling. All right. Craig, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you just fine. Is the microphone not on? I'm back. That's right, folks. We went out this week and got tested, and our tests all came back negative. A woman magically transformed a Q-tip into an ice auger and put it in my nose. I was prepared to say that our county also is fairly low in cases, but over the last couple days, that hasn't been the case. Apparently, for a lot of people in my city, drinking at home is not an option. We are in Wisconsin. But in our lives, we are still maintaining the protocols of safety and hygiene, and so we thought it was a good time to come together in the basement and do a show. That's right. And why? Why would we do a show this time in person? Is there anything big with this episode? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get to that later. He's right getting now. to it later. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a bunch of movies that I've never seen before. You don't know what they are. Every episode, I'm going to spring one on you. It might be good. It might be bad. We'll watch it and talk about it. Welcome to The Basement. Today, not only do we celebrate the beginning of Sci-Fi July, this is also our 200th episode. Our bicentennial, if you will. For tonight's movie, I wanted to pick a genuine cinema classic. Something that embodies everything that's great about movies. And then I changed my mind and decided I wanted to watch a movie that has dinosaurs and spaceships in it. Blast off into adventure with me, with your Hunter from the Future. Oh, Matt. Released in 1983, YHFTF was directed by Antonio Margariti and stars Reb Brown, Corrine Clary, and Luciano Pigozzi. Real missed opportunity there. You could have named your new son Pigozzi, and he would lead a tortured life all through high school. Yeah, because everyone would say, that's the last name. Why is your last name your first name? The film was an Italian-French-Turkish co-production based on the Argentinian comic You're the Hunter. I'm the hunter? No, you're the hunter. Third base. Okay. <laughs> Yor was part of a wave of sword and sorcery themed films that appeared after the success of John Milius' 1982 film, Conan the Barbarian. Despite atrocious reviews and multiple Golden Raspberry nominations, the film grossed over $2.8 million in the U.S. and was, in director Margariti's words, one of the most successful pictures of my life. Ah, oh, the Razzies. I got so many Razzies. It's been an unofficial tradition in, on this show to have the audience pick a movie for our 50-episode milestones, and this is no exception because your was sent to us by a generous viewer. Ooh, check it out. It's so fancy. It has two boxes. Thank you to whoever that was. I should really keep track of these things. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you, person. Hope you're still watching the show because this is this was once in your hands. I also have Variety's Complete Science Fiction Reviews, and I know for a fact that your is listed in here, so let's see what they have to say. Okay, the headline. None of the budget went for wigs. <laughs> I don't need to read anything more than that. I don't think you do. Tonight, I give you the gift of dinosaurs. Ooh. Kind of. Glow fossil science. I've got a gal who loves me, so glow fossil science, glow. Well, it seems to be fossil making kit and everything's written so small so that people can read it in the languages of the world my mission to vicariously educate your son through you continues <laughs> come and hunt with us our hunting ground is the old leather couch and our prey is your hunter from the future oh, i'm assuming that's a song yeah led zeppelin's the immigrant song yeah it's probably where most of the budget went to Ooh, we got to clear the zeppelin song <laughs> No, 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 no money for wigs. <laughs> Are you ready for your? I am ready for your, your. It's We're, our, your. It is now. It's probably a little bit too loud. Oh, it's not loud enough. There are rocks in the wasteland. And Yor runs among the rocks, happily. Because his life is everything that he wants it to be. But that's not going to last for long. He's going to make all the wifeys contained tonight. He's going to make all the wifeys contained tonight? A bunch of Paleolithic types are having a festival. Kala and her guardian, Pack, are out there hunting up this little something or other. Oh, look at that. That looks like a little morsel. But they don't know that Mama Dinosaur is close by and she's not happy. Don't eat my child. Your swoops in and he kills that dinosaur. You're making it extinct. 
right in the squib. <laughs> Yours got this special medallion. I've had it ever since I can remember. It is worn by a woman who lives among the desert people. I have seen it glint on her chest. Yeah, you're looking at the medallion, I'm sure. There's a whole dance thing going on. <laughs> Oh, she's about to flash dance. She enjoys the feast for about five minutes, and then the village is attacked by Neanderthals and burned to the ground. I'm gonna go back to the village. I'm gonna see if there's any survivors. Boy, that pack is a real man. He's a pack man. Probably he was named after that, since it was quite popular at that time. <laughs> Everyone's dead except for the old man. Ugh, blonde woman with a medallion. Ugh. Yor and Kala are beset on by the caveman. <laughs> <laughs> and they steal his medallion. His power is now mine. <laughs> you could do something, Pack. You have a bow and arrow. They also steal Kala and take her back to their cave. You can do nothing now. There are many sentinels down there. Do nothing. It is the Pack way. Well, they have to get in there first. And how are they going to do that? They find a creature of the night. A creature of the night! Yor uses the dead creature as a glider. What? <laughs> oh, come on. I should have seen this coming. <laughs> Next, Yor will kill a snake and turn it into a zipline. And he raises hell. I'm not saving you, I'm just here for my necklace. They've dammed up the lake. If he tears apart that dam, the water's gonna flood in. No, not bathing. Thank you, Yor. You've given back to me that which I love most. You did your share. No, he didn't. They journey a long ways and they come to the land of the disease. Why is yours so different from other men? I don't know, Kala. I'm curious too. Bye, curious. I need to go and find this blonde woman I heard about with a medallion. See you later, guys. <laughs> These sand people come out and start raising a fuss. Mutants! Yor is captured. Hopefully wherever he's going leads to the future, because I'm sick of all this caveman stuff. Inside that cave is a beautiful woman. Hello, Khaleesi. Her name is Roa. Rona? Or Rhoda? Rhonda. I came here together with those men. There, caught in the ice. Poor person was frozen in mid-jazz hands. I've got a special medallion too, just like yours. Y yours and just like your, your, okay. And this ice is weird for this part of the world. The little water that comes from it is vital to these people. And they need the ice for their cocktails. Unfortunately, these guys are gonna sacrifice you because that's how they do. We've got to escape. There must be some place in this world where we can live in peace with our people. Line? <laughs> we'll uh, fix it in post. Nah, you know what? Let's not fix it in post. <laughs> a flaming sword is brought in. So they're going to do this to Yar. Yor. His name's right there in the title, Craig. But Yor gets out of it. That's what he does. He gets out of predicaments. Try to walk. You're walking good. Now try to sashay. He kills all of the Tusken Raiders. And he and Roa... Join up with Pak and Kala, and Kala does not like the fact that there's another woman in the picture. They journey to this land of water. Oh, this is such a nice place, much better than the diseased desert. Have some moss, tramp! Princess R likes Yar, and they should really kiss each other. They kiss so intently that they lay down. Oh, that was nice. Bye. I am content with second base. Among our people, a man can have many wives. So why can't you? And Pack have none. Kala shows up and she's like, oh no, you didn't. <laughs> and you brought a knife to a cat fight. Oh no. Some new homunculus. The cavemen, you thought they were all dead. No, but they're not. And Roa is knocked on the head. She's about to die. Give my medallion to Kala, because she was so cool to me. I'm so sorry I attacked that hoe. Kala, keep this guy as a keeper. And the three of you, you go off and you find the mystery. 
Stonehenge, Stonehenge, where the demons dwell. Stonehenge was in danger of being knocked over by a dwarf. <laughs> Life goes on. You met her four hours ago. <laughs> you are continuing to call him Yar. Yar? Yor. Yar. They continue on and they get to the ocean. Quick, someone invent a boogie board. Kala loves it and there's fish involved. Kala wants to drink the water. Don't do that, lady. Kala catches some fish. They hear screams. This family's being menaced by a dinosaur. This is why you don't travel back then. Everywhere they go, there's a diplodocus. <laughs> Yor jumps in and does his thing. <laughs> Quickly, it's almost out of hit points. And that dinosaur is toast. Come, we will add you to our adventuring party. Is one of you a cleric? <laughs> well, three monks! <laughs> we must go back to the sea. Our fish is burning. Yor, come back to our village. The chief tells Yor of this mysterious fiery bird that fell from the sky and this weird object that fell out of it. You know, Kai, I've been thinking about that bird of fire that fell from the heavens. Pretty weird, huh? We are more than halfway through this thing and there's been no sci-fi yet. I'm sorry, folks. There's that little plastic thing they just found. Yeah, not enough. Peck left his arrows in the cave. Hey, what is this thing? I'm so curious. <laughs> Pack! <laughs> Did he do that? <laughs> and then he burns down the whole village. The box speaks. It's a talking box. <laughs> They're not gods. Gods couldn't be this cruel. Actually, if you look up in mythology, <laughs> they're easily this cruel. Thank you for burning down our village. You may have my father's boat. There's this island that's constantly surrounded by storms. Why don't you go there? Yeah, that's a good idea. Wish I had time to mac on you, but when I do things like that, Kala gets a little knifey. So we'll just guess how to use a boat. <laughs> Setting sun, you say? It's right that way. <laughs> Look at how she's waving. She's waving so weirdly. <laughs> and I wave back. <laughs> she's waving like one of those waving things that's in the back of a car window. <laughs> They sail into the storms, and the seas get rough, and Yor is tossed out of the boat. He washes up on the shore. Kala! Kala! Pack, you I don't care about, but Kala! There we go, sci-fi! <laughs> Through a strange crystal ball, Yor is being watched by this man. He's the overlord. A decision must be made. Ooh, he's Von Sidawi. And on the beach, robots! Drone <laughs> There's one, set for stun. These are androids who are commanded by the Overlord. Another glorious Yor battle. He kills one of them <laughs> and then is captured. I want them both captured and brought here. <laughs> and he's taken to the strange laboratory. This is the land you left when you were a child. My name is Enna. There was a, an accident and he and his father were tossed out into the caveman world. She says his entire history is inside his medallion. All of it. It's like a Tarzan Superman story mixed together. Those are your parents. Baby Yor! Or just like Baby Yoda, but less interesting. It even has a record of your new friends, Bang and Kala. They now have registered accounts, and all they need to do is set up a password and... Bup, bup, bup. Then we meet Overlord. Who are you? Who is anyone, really? Oh, you're my androids. Come and... Come. Blah, 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 blah. And then Yor just wanders off in the middle of Overlord's big monologue. Kala and Pack are on the beach. They're grabbed by an arm out of a cave. Julian Sands. <laughs> <laughs> He's part of this group that's rebelling against the Overlord. We'll take you to find Yor. You can trust me. Tona says, nice blowout. I don't know what that means. I do, and it is a nice blowout. And there's this blind rebel who has a plan. They talk. Then Kala just wanders off from that conversation. Has the girl gone? Ah! Kala is trapped in this hall of mirrors and erotic statues. Sensual artwork. Kala-like. Kala! Why is he smiling? He always smiles. Yor goes in there to try and find her. They go in through the mirrors. It's like a lady from Shanghai situation. And finally, they are reunited. The Overlord finds them. I want to replace all the humans with androids, except for the humans that I make with my loins. And I will rule the world in my own evil way. 
There's a laser battle. We have all access to the atomic pile. Atomic piles are extremely painful. I've heard. Oh, I know what to do. Let's take that bridge to the special goal and get rid of it. Dad, the bridge isn't there. The bridge isn't there right now, blind guy. Here, give me this cord. I'm gonna swing across the thing. He plants presumably a bomb. He can't get at his cord anymore. But Pack did some time in the Italian circus. He comes to the rescue like the daring old man on the flying trapeze. It's gotta be Tony Brown! <laughs> the old blind man says, We planted this bomb, son. It's gonna blow up. And then you're gonna get nothing. They chase after the overlord. I'm not gonna use guns. That's not the your way. Your picks up this thing and stabs the overlord in his guts. Because that's a your way. I'll take care of them. Get on board the ship. Go on. Because I know what a ship is. Come back down. We got to see this. <laughs> the old guy's going to eat it. It stopped. They all pile in. And as the nuclear thing is blowing up, the ship sails off. Your returns to the primitive tribes on the mainland to prevent them making the same mistakes as their forefathers. Will he succeed? You'll never find out, because there's not going to be a sequel to this turkey. The search goes on and on. How does it feel <laughs> to treat your like you do? Your Hunter from the Future. Yeah, we watched that. A generous man does what his heart commands. That's what Pack says. What Pack should have said is, everywhere your goes, complete destruction follows. <laughs> Every village is burned down and an entire island is consumed by nuclear fire. He finds a new race of people, the, the mummy type people living out in the desert. They're all dead. He never once makes me think, yours here. We're going to be fine. <laughs> but why not? Because he's always smiling. I think that's the main flaw of that actor, is he's, he's incapable of showing any emotion other than bemused. Even when he's about to be killed by a flaming sword, he's just grinning. <laughs> I'm going to say something that might shock you. I like this movie, and yeah. I don't think it was really that bad. It's really fun to watch. The actors and actresses are all beautiful people. And the special effects for 83 aren't bad. The Triceratops... It's some pretty good puppet work. It's clearly fake. So now, of course, what I didn't like about it, yours performance, mm -hmm. very limited, although he's a good physical actor. And the plot, such as it was, it wasn't boring, but it just had no momentum. Now let's go to the next thing. Now we're at the ocean. I imagine there was a journey from yours cave to the ice cave and another journey from the ice cave to the ocean. You need to see more walking to understand the distance of the journey or something. These sun setting. Is it implied that they've been, these journeys have taken months? I guess. Nothing is implied. Right. It seems like it's just later that day. He's not your hunter from the future. He's your hunter of the present. Well, he's from a futuristic society, according to the cave people's point of view. Yeah, but that's not the future. He has this this disc, which basically is like a recording device. If we showed up 500 years ago and we had our smartphones or whatever, then we would be from the future, even though we would be in the present. And then if we had a child and we gave them the smartphone... They, too, would be applied to be from the future. <laughs> okay. The Overlord should have been a part of the entire story. Yeah. He's got a crystal ball. He can watch Yor wherever Yor is. So we should start to learn incrementally about his plans and about what he intends for, for Yor. He can also astrally project. He should have been the one through some sort of scheme to get them to come to the island, not mm -hmm. just these... Hey, go to this place. Yeah. Huh? When Yor gets to the island, he is a desirable commodity to the Overlord, so he should be wanting to get him there, like Palpatine wants Luke to get on the Death Star. Yeah. Kala says that she had a dream where Yor was surrounded by fire. Later, Roa says... Dreams are only dreams. Now, in a good script, these would seem like connected elements. That the two romantic partners would both have this thing to say about dreams. Basic screenwriting is connecting those dots for us. It was all shot in Turkey. Mm -hmm. And I never really knew what 
the terrain of Turkey was like. I didn't know that they had forests or I, mean, I know that sounds very ignorant yeah but i know very little about turkey and it was nice to be able to actually see the land and turkey has a lot going on because it's in a strange part of the world geographically it's got a lot of mountains which of course causes deserts which causes forests and all this so i'm kind of surprised we don't see more things coming out of turkey because it is this land of geographical wonders and i also imagine that it's a land of a lot of figs again i have no idea you're just guessing they eat figs there I told you I'm very ignorant about the country. Any Turkish viewers, please feel free to enlighten me on your country. Or if you have an almanac, of, just look up the <laughs> turkey page, scan it, send it to Matt. You know what killed the dinosaurs? Yor did. Yor killed the dinosaurs. Yeah. The science books got it wrong. Well, Yor has captured our attention for about 90 minutes, and now we have escaped from it, and now it is time to go over to the... Verdant land of seen it. Seen it. That was a long walk. Yes, yes, it was. We made it though. Tyler Wilson writes, I give Avengers Endgame an A plus. Have you guys seen it? Yes, I've seen it. I haven't seen it. I am happy I saw Avengers Endgame because I can just be done with it now. I have reached the end of a story. I can go back and see a couple of Marvel movies that I missed, but far too often I was stuck seeing Marvel movies because the next piece of the puzzle had just been released when I could have been seeing something else. So I'm just happy that it's done. When you go to Europe, you see a lot of cathedrals and eventually you just kind of get cathedraled out and you're not overawed by the whole thing anymore. And that's how it felt when I got there. H-W-E-C-Q-I writes, Birdemic, you should do a scene it. I'm about to do a scene it. I'm not going to participate because I haven't seen the movie. Birdemic came out around the same time as The Room it is seen as a very similar film to The Room, where it's so bad you won't believe it. The lead actor has the worst diction of anyone I've ever heard. Sapinus. That means solar panels. <laughs> the birds that attack are basically gifs that are on the screen, and mm -hmm. they fly in, and everyone goes, ah, ah. But there's something about it that makes me think that it's kind of bad by design. I'm not getting that same gonzo joy watching Birdemic that I did watching The Room. I only see references to it online. I never hear people in real life talking about Birdemic. If it's a really quality bad movie, people will talk about it in real life. Alexander Sarg writes, Ad Astra. Two incredibly versatile actors were apparently told to put on a single face and never change that expression throughout the entirety of the film. A film that had so much potential and completely wasted it. I've seen it. I've seen it. I get where you're coming from, Alexander. The performances of the two main characters are quite stilted in this movie, and it is by design. It's a movie that has humanity wrestling with the machines we have to become to achieve great things. This film seems of a piece with the films of Alex Garland, Annihilation, Ex Machina, also Interstellar from Christopher Nolan. It's a genre I like to call sci Fi. <laughs> Everyone speaks in hushed whispers. The main characters are tortured by memories. And the third act kind of doesn't make any sense. Yes. Brad Pitt goes a very, very long distance to tell the story. He has to go all the way out to Neptune. If you want your sci-fi, just that endless isolation of months in space trying to, you know, getting out there going billions of miles, it really sets in. And when the movie was over, I was sighing too. It was, I was intensely sad for a good hour and a half after the movie was over. You know what I think the first sci-fi movie was? Yeah, 2001? No, Silent Running. Oh, yeah. Just a tortured main character. He just he wants things, and it's very sad throughout mm -hmm. the whole thing. Sci-fi, let's make it a thing. <laughs> and credit me for it. Yes, he gets that. I get talent bump. Jordan Romaker writes, I enjoyed The Rise of Skywalker quite a bit. Seen it. Seen it. Here's a fun fact for you. Yeah. All three Star Wars trilogies, I saw the first two in the theater and the last one not in the theater. They finally figured out how to make C-3PO a funny character. <laughs> he's always been comic relief, but he's just always been not funny comic relief. They're doing a joke about C-3PO as opposed to making C-3PO the joke, which makes it finally work. And the film teaches an important lesson, that when your friend is in a battle with their arch enemy, don't run up behind them and scream their name. Because that's what Finn does to Ray. <laughs> he runs up behind her and goes, Ray! 
It's like, she's yeah. trying to do something yes. here, Finn. <laughs> she's about to be sliced in half. <laughs> this is the one that solves the problem of the previous two movies. Finn, Ray, and Poe. This is the first time the three of them are together. Very first Star Wars movie, A New Hope. You get all the core people working together halfway through the movie. All right, this is the gang. Then in the next movie, you can separate them and have them thinking we should be helping Luke, and Luke's thinking I need to be helping my friends. You can separate them further in the next one, but they never do that. So at the end of the second movie, Poe meets Ray. You're all supposed to be buddies by this point. J.J. Abrams is someone who does franchises. Ryan Johnson is someone who's an artist, and that's why Ryan Johnson was a bad choice. Hmm. He was too good of a director to do Star Wars, just like how Edgar Wright was too good of a director to do Ant-Man because he couldn't play the Marvel game. If you want to know more about our show, you need to hunt no further than our website, welcome to the basement show.com. It has all of our episodes there, and there are PayPal donation buttons that you can click on and donate to support this show. You're gonna love it. And most importantly, our website is not on a stupid talking box. Find folks such as these Tristan, who says, thank you so much for what you do. And Paul and Dev, very generous donation. Thank you guys again. We should have donated a long time ago. Guys, it's never too late. And here's one for you guys. In fact, one for each. To find out who the rest of our donors are, to see the exciting contents of our mail crate, you can go to Unboxing, which comes out this coming Friday. Go to it. You can watch it. Watch it on the stupid talking box. <laughs> comes out this Friday. This is our 200th episode. We hope you are enjoying yourself, and we were very glad to be able to reconvene for this momentous occasion. Momentous for us, we hope it is for you too. You know, these quarantine episodes have been a strange experience. And even though I thought they turned out great, but it still felt like there was a little something missing. Filming from my home, it exhausted me. Yeah. Like I was just wiped out after every single one. And even though our show had to adapt to all the weirdness that's happening in the world, one thing that has never been missing is all of you. And we are very happy for your continued viewership. We're very grateful to our uh, supporters um, who donate to support the show. And I want to share something with you. This is over there on my shelf. And this contains all of the correspondence that you have all sent. Any letter piece of artwork, uh, little cards, not the postcards, those are with Craig, even little notes from Amazon that have a personal message. I always put them in this basket and they're all here, right there. And someday when this show is no more, and that day will come, uh, and I'm, a, I'm an old wizened man, I'm going to go through this basket and I'm going <laughs> to reminisce, I'm going to revisit all of your words and all of your well wishes, and um, I just wanted to sh share this with you and express how grateful I am. I have a tough time expressing gratitude and a tough time expressing sincerity. It's been something that's been a problem for me in my entire life, but I never fail to feel those things. And I just wanted you all to know that. And of course, I feel it towards you as well, towards Tona, who worked so hard to make this show happen. And um, uh, 200 episodes, baby. It's good stuff. Thanks for joining us. And now watch this. <laughs> It's a good song. I like that song. Thanks. It's a talking box. <laughs>